Mm, nothing gets my heart pumping faster than pulling up to a fully involved structure fire with smoke and flames shooting out of every single orifice of that structure. And then nothing puts that flame out faster than thinking about the absolute gross depiction of anything firefighter related being vomited onto all of our TV and movie screens across the world. So since we've taken so much time to look at the medical side of these shows, let's see how they handle things like, I don't know, high angle rescue, extrications, or pretty much anything to do with fire fighting. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, let's stop there for a second. In no fire station across the world are there six matching glass cups. There's normally at least one Flanagan's cup, two or three cups that somebody stole from another station from another matching set, and one misshapen ceramic cup from the 80s that nobody wants to use but somebody ends up having to use because there's no cups left. Wait. He must have freed himself from the rig and fallen. We need to get him on the back and stabilize him right away. Saying that somebody has a spinal injury and how important it is to maintain their spinal integrity, then picking them up and bringing them to the thing that you need to stabilize their spine with is like pouring water in your hand and bringing it to your cup. Good nice pack. Blue fire is not regular fire. It's sticky, so if it touches us, we can't stamp it out. Oh crap, blue fire stickier than red fire? We need to update the stop, drop, and roll protocol. Okay kids, just remember, if you're on fire, stop, Drop and roll, yeah. Well, unless it's the blue sticky fire, you can't stamp that stuff out, so you're just gonna die. Inside out. The most important thing is protect your airway. We've got an oxygen tank. Put him on this, that'll protect him. Yeah, you might wanna learn about something called the fire tetrahedron. Adding oxygen to that situation may not end well for you. Jack, flip the engine around. I'm climbing on the back and you're driving it in. Two things, one, I don't think it's gonna end very well for that apparatus or you or anyone on that trunk when you drive it through the mysterious blue sticky Harry Potter flames. Two, you know you wouldn't have to cover your face if you were wearing your uh, protective equipment. You have to come help. I pulled them out of the pool and I tried, but they won't wake up. We're gonna set up a triage over here. we Will do. Everybody else take a kid. Star Wars. Mm, that's what I'm talking about. That's straight out of the hazmat book. And I quote, make sure you set up your triage as close to the hazmat incident as possible so you can ensure that you become one of the victims. Is that liquid nitrogen? It must have displaced the oxygen over the pool, which means they're all asphyxiated. It means everybody needs supplement O2. Nope, I'm pretty sure she said she pulled them out of the pool after they asphyxiated and then drowned. Just a thought. Why would he do that? He was probably covered in blue sticky fire and couldn't put himself out. It's too heavy. Gibson! Gibson! Yep, that's the best thing you do there, guys. You just brought back five dead kids from inhaling that magical asphyxiating smoke, so you should probably go shove your face in it to go find your freelancing buddy. Ah, <laughs> oh, there he is. Hazmat Aquaman. Well guys, I know fire, hazmat, and tech rescue stuff can be extremely scary. And sometimes it's just difficult to know what to do. So just remember this. If you're ever surrounded by fire with a patient, just add oxygen. You'll end that situation real fast.